It's time. Time to get credit for the work you've done. Time to get the recognition you deserve. With Purdue Global, you can move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself. You're worth the investment in yourself to earn a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will respect. Purdue's online university is designed to support working adults like you who know it's never too late to accomplish your goals. It's never too late to make a comeback. It's time to start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. Wings are here. Oh, from No, I'd never order from anymore. Popeyes now has wings in five flavors. Ghost pepper, roasted garlic parmesan, sweet and spicy, signature hot, and honey barbecue. Marinated in Louisiana spices, hand-battered and flipped. Makes no sense they're $5.99 for six pieces. Taste them. Mmm, crunchy outside. And juicy inside. Consider me a convert. That's the most romantic thing you've said to me all month. We don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Price may vary. Hey, this is Reed Isbell. And Dan Isbell. Otherwise known as The Brothers Hunt. We're hosting a new podcast, God's Country, by Meat Eater and I Heart Podcast. God's Country is a weekly drive to the intersection of music and the outdoors. Two things that go together like Sunday and some pond fishing. Or cows and green pastures. This record will be the one that it will always define who I am. So hop on in and ride shotgun with us as we take the back roads with some of the most influential people in country music today. Listen to God's Country on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Hi, everyone. It's Amanda Rieger Green. Today, we're going to talk about all things Pluto and more because there's a ton of hype around Pluto because it's just changed signs, moved from Capricorn into Aquarius. But hold on just a second. Just so you know, Pluto will retrograde for a little bit this year back into Capricorn. It'll it'll happen from September 1st to November 19th. So for like two and a half months, It will move back into that very last degree of Capricorn. And after that, for 20 some odd more years, Pluto will be in Aquarius. Why is all of this so significant? We're going to talk about those things. What is Pluto? What does Pluto in Aquarius mean? Of course, it's a big, massive generational thing. But what does it mean for you personally? What are some tools and tips and things for you to drill down and become aware of? But also remember, this is a big unfolding story. It's a generational storyline. We're entering into, you've all heard this, the age of Aquarius. Well, this is kind of the big push. And not only is Pluto entering Aquarius this massive door opening kind of energy to all things Aquarius, which are very intellectual, they're futuristic, they're visionary, they're radical, they're rebellious. There's, we'll dive into those things. But Aquarius is an air sign. Air signs like Libra and Gemini, and you know I'm a Libra. So we're all about the mind and thinking and communicating. We can be in our heads. We've had a lot of energy in Earth. Pluto has been in Capricorn. We've got Uranus in Taurus, Jupiter in Taurus, Earth signs. We've also had Mercury, Venus, Mars in Capricorn. We've had a lot of really heavy Earth energy for a while. And once we start opening the doors to being in air signs because Uranus in 2025 will move into Gemini and Jupiter this year will move into Gemini. So we're going to have bigger outer planets holding space in these air signs, communication, information gathering and sharing, enhanced cognition, enhanced consciousness. And we can look at it in so many different ways. That's what us air signs do. We like to analyze all sides of things. But one of the big things about Aquarius, it's about knowledge, expanding your knowledge, expanding your consciousness. And, you know, I think of Gemini when I say get curious. That's such a Gemini thing. When you marry curiosity, expanding your perspective, learning how to be objective, Objective, to step back and say, okay, I don't know that I believe what you're saying, or I may not agree with you, but I hear your points. That's like a winning ticket over, let's call it the next 20 years is, I may not agree with you, but I sure do love you, or I respect that you're so convicted around that. How can we meet in the middle? How can we still be friends? And we all know there's tons of polarization, whether it be in politics, belief systems, certain rights. Aquarius is the humanitarian. It's going to be about this revolution in humanity and human rights and what that looks like. 
Aquarius is about freaking rocking the status quo. So get ready. How can you be a revolutionary? How can you individuate and reinvent yourself? We're going to talk about those things. I'm going to give you some fun ways to look at this and ways that my mind kind of works when I'm thinking about Aquarian energy and how I am integrating it. I want to start out by reading a quote by Stephen Forrest in my book of Pluto. If you remember, I did an interview, a podcast interview with Stephen Forrest, who is hands down my favorite astrologer. I've learned so much from Stephen. He is an evolutionary astrologer. He dives into the psychology of astrology and astronomy, but he has a whole book on Pluto. And, you know, it's my kind of thing. I love this book. But one of the quotes when he is talking about Pluto, I'm going to read this to you, is... With Pluto in Aquarius, the ruling passion lies in a celebration of the human capacity to innovate in all ways, but most centrally in our capacity to reinvent ourselves. Pluto in Aquarius is about revolution and reinvention and individuation. How can I reinvent myself? And it's where are you invigorated? Where are you passionate? Where are you awake, engaged, alive, in tune, tuned in, turned on? Those are your little nuggets of how you begin to reinvent yourself. And I'm not saying you're just coming out with a new identity, but what in you is evolving? Aquarius is about evolution. It's the futurist. It's about the evolution of fill in the blank, humanity, human consciousness, intelligence, artificial intelligence. Aquarius rules tech and it rules innovation. I'm going to talk about some famous Aquarians and people throughout history who are Aquarius and Aquarians and have been highly Aquarian in their rebellious, innovative natures. And this is really cool because I got I got all into it. I know I know famous people today and I'm going to reference those, but I I was kind of mind blown at some of the people I found. One of them is Ferdinand Magellan. He's the guy, the explorer, the Spanish explorer, Portuguese explorer, I think that is, maybe one or the other, who circumnavigated the globe. Think about that. You know, they were talking about the earth being flat and maybe the earth really is flat. I don't know. That's a conspiracy theory out there. But but all that to say, he was the first guy that was paid by, I can't remember if it was the Spanish queen and king or whom it was. Okay, don't quote me on that. But you all know who I'm talking about. You remember that from geography. At least I do. But he got in a freaking boat and he traveled almost all the way around the globe. He was an explorer. I mean, that was frightening. Most people died out at sea. So Ferdinand Magellan... Mozart. <laughs> and, you know, think about his music. And he, he did not live a long life, Mozart, but he created a prolific amount of work in his symphony and his ability to work with harmonics. And he was a child prodigy. That's Mozart, Charles Darwin. I mean, hello, evolution, science, Darwinism, I mean, evolutionary biology, Charles Darwin. And again, you don't have to agree with any of these people, but where can you appreciate, whoa, Charles Darwin was a rebel rouser. Another person who massively stands out for me is Galileo. I mean, Galileo was deemed a heretic by the church because he was essentially the father of observational astronomy, the father of modern physics. He was the creator of the scientific method. You know, he was really looking at science and went against the beliefs of the church. And mind you, the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was back in... 1778, 1778 through 1798, which is when the American Revolution happened, okay? And before that, it was in Aquarius in 1532 through 1533, the Protestant Reformation, when the the church split from the Catholic Church. So when Pluto transits Aquarius, there's revolution. When we look at famous or outstanding Aquarians, people who represent that they do something revolutionary, evolutionary, outside the box. They push the boundaries of the norms of society. They challenge the status quo, even if it means, you know, I'm being deemed a heretic. This is what I'm studying. This is what I believe. And I'm putting it out there. They question and challenge truths. That is Aquarian energy. And if you don't take anything away from this podcast, one thing I would take away for the next 20 years... <laughs> 
like, wow, you're like, what is it that she's going to say to take away from is ask questions, question things. Well, why does this work this way? Or why is the news just showing this? Hmm, what do I think about that? Or somebody keeps telling me something and over and over again, but do I believe that? Or is something not quite right here? And it doesn't mean that you exactly understand or have the answers. Aquarius is about knowing. It's the I know sign. And you want to hear something funny? You know, I'm big on I am. I am fill in your blank using your mighty I am. And we know it's an eight year in numerology. It's a big year of empowerment and manifestation and really tapping into your light and your point of attraction that I am deeper than the I am is the I know. And I would say maybe three or so weeks ago, I don't know, I was driving in the car, you know, car, the car sometimes is my like spiritual space. And I do all sorts of crazy spiritual, crazy, amazing spiritual practices in the car And one day, I don't know, I was on the road, I was driving, I was in my trance, but paying attention to the road. But I'm in my I'm in my zone, I'm in my space. And I was, you know, feeling just sentimental and uplifted. And I could feel the vibrations running through my body I was very tuned in, and in the vortex, so to speak, as Abraham Hicks would say, I was in the vortex, right? I was in it, I was in the pure positive potential. So I start going to my I am, I am love, I am kindness, whatever was coming through, right? And all of a sudden, like something shifted in me and I changed the wording. And I said, I know love. I know kindness. I know abundance. I know gratitude. I know health. I know well-being. I know compassion. I know grace. I mean, it was like, and it was like, I know, I know. And it's not, I know I am. I didn't like double down on that. It was like, I know, I know. And I tell you what, that has been a mantra for me. I know. And that's very Aquarian. What do you know? And The way that I like to look at it is, gosh, I know hope. I may not feel hopeful all day, every day. I may be cynical or in self-pity or in fear or doubt, but I, I know hope. I know love. I may not love myself or like myself all the time, or I may not like you, you know, (laughs) maybe frustrated with my husband, like whatever that is. But deep down, I know love. I know safety and security. So there's something deeper to the I know, and that is very Aquarian. Let's talk about some more famous people. Thomas Edison, I mean, the inventor of electricity. I mean, I think there's been other inventors of electricity before Thomas, but he also invented the phonograph and motion pictures, like capturing moving motion pictures. Uh, So Edison, an inventor, Aquarius is a very innovative inventor type energy, the inventor. Modern day Aquarius people, Oprah Winfrey, Think about her and think about the Oprah Winfrey show. When she was doing the Oprah Winfrey show years ago in the 90s, she started talking about spirituality, the mind-body-spirit connection. And she started having people on talking about solution, opening up to this mind-body-soul connection. And Oprah, as we know, she is a wonderful interviewer. She asks questions. She holds space for people, but she also holds space for people's voices, people's voices to be heard. There's a, a lot of things we can look at with Oprah in her story. Bob Marley, One Love, Hello, Revolutionary, in a, a love revolution, the Rasta du jour, like, I mean, g- good grief. Let's see who else. Oh, Michael Jordan. And I don't know, I can't remember the name of that movie. It's like Air. Air. Air is the name of that movie with Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck. Y'all should watch it. If you haven't, first of all, I'm an 80s baby, so I love the references. They do a really good job with pop culture and the 80s in capturing that movie. But what was amazing about Michael Jordan, and a lot of it was his mama, by the way, you know, I mean, I think Viola Davis plays his mom, if I'm not mistaken, in the movie. It's been a little bit. But... He was the first sports athlete. They got Nike to make a shoe designed for, you know, Air Jordan, like the that shoe. And Nike had a hard time buying into it. It was a whole thing. You should watch that movie. But Michael Jordan paved the way for a lot of sports messaging and branding and the way that sports is branded and you have ambassadors and representatives of different sports paraphernalia and all the things you all know. But I mean, Michael Jordan, need I say more? I've got to like give a shout out. Paris Hilton. I mean, 
Like I have to be 100% transparent. I just read Paris Hilton's book at my sister's recommendation via our niece, who was the most unassuming person that was like, oh, you've got to read Paris's book. You've got to listen to the Audible. So my sister was like, read it. And I was like, really? And I mean, I was like 10 minutes in, I was totally hooked and I was blown away. But more than anything, and I have to tell you this, her book surprised the heck out of me. She motivated and inspired me in ways that I was like, dang, she's ingenious. And guess what a sign of an Aquarian is? Genius. Not so much intellect. I'm not saying Paris is smart because she actually is a wicked smart cookie. But think about her as like the OG influencer, getting paid to show up at events, getting paid for brand endorsements and to be places and to be the selfie. I mean, she broke the mold, the status quo on some of that and freaking monetized it. And she knew what she was doing, but she's extremely tech savvy and always looking at tech and assimilating tech and looking to game the system. Like, and and not so much game the system, that might not be the best way to describe her, but she's like a gamer. And I don't mean a literal like gamer, but she's always learning about technology and how to get ahead of technology. And when she freaking puts her mind to something, She figures it out and she networks the heck out of it. And she uses her networks. Highest aquarium aim aim is use your networks. Who are your friendships, affiliations, and associations? And do they support your goals, wishes, and dreams? I'm going to repeat that. Who are your friendships, affiliations, and associations? And do they support, encourage, motivate, inspire your hopes, wishes, and dreams? And in order to be able to answer that, you got to know what your hopes, wishes, and dreams are. And that's really important when it comes to Aquarian energy is who are my friendships? Who are my people? Who's my tribe? Who's my community? Who are my networks? Who are my go-tos? Who lifts me up and inspires me? You know that adage of you are what you eat? It's kind of like you are the five people you spend the most time with. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying. You, you, You aren't them. But if you're continually around a certain group of people that are demotivated or tired or exhausted or struggling. And hey, life happens. You know, you can't just blow off all your friends. That's not what what we're getting at here. This is about how do I infiltrate and introduce new people, places, and experiences that motivate, inspire, and embolden me. Speaking of another bold Aquarius, Rosa Parks, hello, revolutionary. Hello, activist. Hello, I'm not going to stand for this. This is not okay. And a, a bold humanitarian, Rosa Parks. There are so many incredible Aquarius. Harry Styles. Look at Harry Styles and gender and gender norms and all of those areas and breaking molds. And again, this is, may not be what you resonate with or agree with in your belief systems, but looking at these individuals, these kind of Aquarian archetypes as futurist, revolutionaries, breaking the mold, breaking the status quo, that's what the energy is about. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concern about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants too in the years ahead. The materials used to make just one long range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug in hybrids or 90 gas electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you a hybrid, plug in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop. Learn more and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. 
Between work and the kids, finding time for wellness can be challenging. Luckily, Eggland's Best has created a better egg, and they are now available in free range and pasture raised, offering the freshest, best tasting, most nutritious egg made accessible for everyone. Their chickens eat better, so you can too. Eggland's Best hens, including pasture raised and free range, eat a unique patented vegetarian feed to lay naturally better eggs, offering your family superior nutrition. Compared to ordinary eggs, Eggland's Best contains six times more vitamin D and more than double the vitamin B12. Eggland's Best free range and pasture raised eggs are an excellent source of vitamins D, E, B2, B12, and B5 and stay fresher than ordinary eggs. For busy families, Eggland's Best free range and pasture raised eggs are an easy, quick way to provide a nutrient rich meal for the whole family. Try a better egg and the freshest, best tasting, most nutritious egg. Eggland's Best, America's superior tasting egg, is now available in free range and pasture raised at your local grocery store. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. Let's talk about Pluto for a little bit and Aquarius. I know I've touched on the energies. Pluto really emulates death and rebirth, catastrophe, the dark shadow side of things. It's about facing your fears. It's about diving deep into unconscious, subconscious terrain. What really keeps you up at night? What are you truly afraid of and why? And are you willing to uncover it? Are you willing to stare at it, look at it right in the eyes? It's like the monster in the forest, you know, or the dragon on the hero's journey. Are you willing to look your fears in the eye? And do you believe that you can face your fears? That's what Pluto is about. Pluto is also truly about transformation, And guess what? We're in an eight universal year, which is about empowerment and finding the sense of empowerment. And when when we transform, when we evolve, when we grow, when we look at our wounds, Pluto, and are willing to heal them, willing to face them head on, get help, get support, recognize our woundedness, we not only heal, we evolve, We are phoenix rising from the ashes kind of energy. So healing wounds, revolution, that's really a little bit more Aquarian. Aquarian is very rebellious, iconoclastic, eager to challenge truths, innovative. It's mostly about individuation. It's about this reinvention of the self. And it's about uncensoring yourself, challenging the status quo. And I don't mean you have to get out there and be a revolutionary and join a cause. It's it, it, Remember, this is 20 years of energy. And a few um, key points just to make note of that are happening right now that are punctuating this energy. Pluto moved into Aquarius on the 20th of January. Uranus is basically standing still in the sky right now. It's the last of the planets to station direct. So once Pluto, Pluto, excuse me, once Uranus stations and is moving direct on the 27th of January, all systems a go. All planets are moving direct through early April. Big energy, wind in your sails, cosmic wind in your sails. That's a big turning point, but Uranus rules Aquarius. Uranus is the planet of quick transformation, destruction, not so much rebirth, but innovation, rebelliousness, massive quick shifts in perspectives, new innovation, new ideas. 
Uranus is like a freaking espresso shot. I mean, it gets you fired up. So the fact that it is standing still in the sky right now, its energy is personified and it's in Taurus, an earth sign. So a lot of times when we have Uranus transits, because Uranus is an outer planet, just like Pluto is, not so much like Mercury, Mars, and Venus that are closer in, closer to Earth, and interacting more on a day-to-day, month-over-month basis. These are these are bigger, longer transits that we see in the collective or on a soul level or with our consciousness. But with Uranus in Taurus, a lot of times the Earth is disrupted. So tidal waves, fires, look at all of the events on earth, sometimes war, look at what's going on in the Middle East. You know, and Pluto, and I'm going to go back to Pluto for a second, because it's popping up to say this, Pluto's been in Capricorn. Capricorn is about standing traditions, infrastructure, values. This is the way we've always done it. Remember I said Pluto and Aquarius challenging the status quo. Pluto capitalism, When Pluto moved into Capricorn, that was in 2008, for its stint in Capricorn, do you remember what happened in 2008 and 2009? The economy. I remember because I got laid off. And that was like 2008 through 2012. It was freaking challenging for me. And I know where it was in my chart and I know what was impacted in my natal chart. But literally, as Pluto shifted into Capricorn, We had the housing market crash, and there was a lot going on economically. So there's been a lot of financial systems, government, school systems, hospitals. Capricorn rules all of that. So we've been laying the foundation, the systems, everything that is traditional. We've always done it this way. This is how it works. There's kind of a dominant energy there. Well, Aquarius starts to say, but why? But why? But why do we do it that way? Why can't we do it this way? Why not? You know, why wouldn't we offer these natural resources in addition to drilling for oil and gas? There's there's a lot of things that are going to push your freaking buttons over the next 20 years. And instead of rebelling against them, it's like, where can I collaborate? Where can I see both sides of things in order to expand my opportunities, expand our resources and work together rather than apart from Another thing that I think is important to mention, in order to feel successful during this 20-year transit, you're going to have to thicken your skin a little bit. That's a big piece of it, not caring as much what other people think or doing things out of obligation or you are worried somebody's not going to love you or like you or agree with you, hurting somebody's feelings. And it's not about shutting yourself off because Aquarius can be extremely emotionally detached. It can be self-righteous, emotionally detached, and it can be too iconoclastic, too idealistic, and then it can get kind of stuck. And Aquarius does not like to be stuck, but it can get stuck on a belief stuck on something but but it's very important that you go do you and not worry or stress as much about what other people think let's think about that in terms of social media for a long time especially since the innovation of facebook and instagram and tiktok and twitter and all of the, all of those platforms which is very aquarian mind you that's a very you know tech innovation is aquarius and it connects with the populace humanity, the social forums, think about how we feel about ourselves with, oh, our number of likes, or we judge people when people put stuff out there, gosh, I wish my life looked like that. That's going to start shifting. You know, one of the places I already see this, and it's subtle, but it's quite interesting, and I noticed it, you know, that feature on Instagram or whatever, where you can turn off the number of likes you have, and you put so-and-so liked this and others, That's very much Aquarian, like kind of saying, hey, like we don't have to measure you against your number of followers or your likes. We're going to measure you against, oh, what do you put out there? Am I interested in what you're saying? Are you teaching me? Or do I love getting to see what you put out there about your family and being connected to you? You're going to feel more inspired to be connected to people, whether it's literally your family, your friends and your social network or the people from afar that you follow, 
because of what they stand for, their messaging. You follow them because you enjoy or inspired by or learn from or resonate with versus certain metrics. And we're going to move away from metrics, which will help us. I mean, I think it'll help any of us not rating ourselves based on likes or certain status things. Remember, busting up the status quo. But one thing to be mindful of is indifference. When you get indifferent about something like, oh, that's not my cause. Uh, If I don't see it, it's not really happening. That is a huge thing to be mindful of now and in the upcoming years of when you get afraid Sometimes that's fear, like, oh, that's not really happening. Uh, that's not really happening to me. Uh, that's too far from home. Oh, that's really sad, but mm, not my battle to fight. We all do that. We disassociate, and we disassociate emotionally and from our human connection. That is a real temperature gauge that you are in the darkness, the shadow of Aquarius, because Aquarius is passionate and engaged but it can easily get indifferent when it gets afraid or afraid of what other people are going to think or afraid of it speaking its mind. So becoming indifferent, cold, or emotionally dissociated are things to look out for. And listen, if you are an Aquarius sun, moon, or rising, get ready because this is your time. I'm excited about that for you. And it's funny, my sister, who is a Leo, Leo is the polarity of Aquarius. All of the signs have polarities. I'm a Libra. My polarity is Aries. The opposite of Aquarius is Leo. And they're similar. They're opposites for a reason because they share lessons. Leo is about the ego. It's about the I, the me, the healthy development of ego, being the center of attention, shining its light, being okay, being seen, putting itself out there. It's touchy-feely. It takes things personally. But when it's at its highest, when it's using its ego to its highest advantage, it uses the ego through the heart when it's generous, when it shines and shares its light because it can, not only because it feels good to the Leo, because it uplifts the people generously around it. It comes from the generosity of heart and spirit and also creativity and self-expression. So my sister was asking me, she's like, oh, I listened to this thing on YouTube and this astrologer was saying, it's going to be tough, Leos. Like you, you know, it was a whole doom and gloom astrology podcast. And I was like, dude, no, it's, I mean, life is going to be tough. There's going to be challenges. But I was like, I think it's so empowering to have Pluto opposing your son. And she has other things in her astrology. But I'm like, oppositions create amazing new beginnings, amazing awareness, amazing ability to rise higher. I was like, don't be afraid of that. Yes, will you have some oppositions and some challenges in your astrology and your transits? Of course course you will. But that opposition does not have to be frightening. It gets to empower you and you get to embrace some Aquarian qualities, which for Leo's, not wearing your heart on your darn sleeve or maybe being a little less self-centered. I say that with love to my Leo's because I've had a lot of Leo's in my life and I love them. (laughs) But we know that Leo's sometimes it's kind of like, look at me, don't look at me energy. So being able to be in the middle of the herd, that's Aquarian energy, finding your people, finding your tribe, being able to shine your light and share your light, but feel like you fit in, feel a part of. A few things that you can focus on. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. Yeah, we hear a lot about fully electric vehicles and Toyota. They got them with more on the way, I'm telling you. We also know a BEV is not for everyone. Whether it's because of cost, range, or if you're like Ray and you're going to start freaking out. Oh no, I can't find a charging station when that battery gets real low. Yeah, plus the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero. So Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants too. In the years ahead, trust me, it's happening, baby. The materials used to make just one long range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug in hybrids or 90 gas electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid 
plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, or get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. Vroom, vroom. Do you expect the best for your family in school, sports, and life? If so, you should expect the best from your food as well. With your active and healthy lifestyle, feed your loved ones amazing food like Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs. Eggland's Best hens, including pasture-raised and free-range, eat a unique patented all-vegetarian feed, so they lay naturally better eggs, offering your family superior nutrition. Their chickens eat better, so you can too. Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs are now available. So don't settle for anything less. With six times more vitamin D, ten times more vitamin E, and more than double the vitamin B12 compared to ordinary eggs, Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs stay fresh longer, and they taste great every time. Give yourself and your family only the best eggs. Give them Eggland's Best. Expect the best from your food, like Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs. Look for Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs with superior nutrition today, now available at your local grocer. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience, you have the knowledge, It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late, never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. A few things that you can focus on are healing fears of getting involved. Like I was saying, if you feel indifferent or find yourself indifferent around something, healing any fears of getting involved or participating in something. And an easy way to do that is think of humanitarian causes that you might be interested in. This is a really ripe time for this because of the numerology, the beginning of this year, the empowerment with the energy of the eight. And what's really cool is we have the sun in Aquarius right now. Pluto has shifted into Aquarius. Venus will move into Aquarius early in February. Mercury will and Mars will. So we're going to go from all this heavy earth energy to all of this massively abundant, Aquarian, futuristic, expansive stuff is about to start happening. And it's really important to pay attention to the energies, I would say, between now and March. Like, what insights do you have? What ideas do you have? What are you getting curious about? What's bothering you? What's frustrating you? What's creating fear? Really paying attention So you can look at those fears and figure out ways to heal them or ask for help or get involved somewhere that gets you out of yourself or any small-minded, limited thinking where you have blinders on so you can expand your vision. So when I say humanitarian causes and signing up for humanitarian causes, hello, we all have a lot on our plates. And we've all got things going on. So I'm not saying, okay, you need to go do this and volunteer your time. No, I'm just giving you ideas. So when opportunities you come up, you think, oh, I'm going to get outside of my box and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to challenge my own status quo. So think about this. We're going to have an election coming up and gosh knows, who knows what's going to happen with that. Remember, I just talked about the American Revolution, the Protestant Reformation. There's some crazy stuff going on, y'all. But think about like if you're really passionate about people voting, whether they like the candidates or not. Maybe you get involved in something with voting and access to voting. Use your talents, use your passions, things that you care about to dedicate or volunteer your time. Maybe you are very passionate about 
homeless populations. I mean, we have rising homeless populations. And what are we doing about that? Where can you get involved in your community? And maybe it's through your church and homeless shelters or donations or meals provided to the homeless. You use your networks in your community. Maybe you are passionate about a certain disease or cancer because it has affected you. You've had a personal, someone personal you love battle and lose to a disease, let's call it, or a cancer, and you really want to raise money and awareness for research and innovation around opportunities for cures and healing. Get on board with things that you care about that connect you to something greater. And again, you don't have to pick 10 things. Just see what shows up for you and where you might be of service, offer your time, because it's also about you building friendships and networks and like-minded people and finding your tribe. So friendship and community is another important cornerstone of this energy. And what that means is who are your friends? Who do you enjoy spending time with? Do you prioritize them? Do you hang out with them? I've shared this with you all before. I freaking love my Pilates class. And I don't just love it because I've seen results with Pilates. It works for my body. But I love going to Pilates and I enjoy my friendships and the women in my Pilates class. It's mostly women. We have a few guys. And shout out to those guys because we don't get a lot of guys in Pilates. It's badass, even for dudes. So I love being at Pilates. I love my friendships and affiliations I have there. They're like a a community that I enjoy spending time with a few hours of week that they revitalize me. They help me feel safe. They help me feel seen. I enjoy them and I don't have to take them home with me. But what I do take home with me is feeling uplifted, connected, inspired, and with new friendships and affiliations. So it doesn't just have to be the people that you go on a girl's trip with. It can be who are your communities, who are your friendships, but also connecting with your friendships. I was with a group of women at dinner last week, and it's a healthy community of women, and we are really focused on our growth and our spirituality. We all know each other very well, so we hold space in a beautiful way for us to be ourselves and be, you know, perfectly imperfect and messy and and to be honest. And we were sitting there, we had like this potluck, and we were sitting there, and I said, gosh, I am really grateful to have communities of women to have women friends and the ability to go on a Wednesday night, do a women's potluck, sit around the table, laugh, talk, be honest, and to prioritize that in my life. And I had had a long day on Wednesday. Like I had had a long day and would rather have just gone home and watched Netflix. Total truth bomb right there. But it was like, but no, I want to go spend time with them. And I was better for it and reinvigorated. So who are your peeps? Who are your peeps and do you prioritize them? Or do you say, hey, let's have a game night at the house? Or, hey, guys, let's go hunting. You know, if you're a guy, I don't want to single out the women on here because we've got a lot of amazing guy listeners, by the way. And I'm going to be better inclusive about including stuff for the dudes because I have some badass guys who show up and for this pod and give me the richest, coolest inspiration and feedback. So guys, like who are your peeps? Who are your tribe? And are you saying to your wife or your girlfriend or wherever you are in life, hey, I got to go hang out with my dudes tonight. I'm go- My husband goes out to eat and goes and hangs out with a group of his guys once a week almost. And he doesn't really miss it. We go do things with our own people and we do stuff together. So think about that in this energy. And also being objective, I mentioned this before, where can you look at the bigger picture? Mm, I might not agree with you, but I hear you. I hear your points. Tell me why you think about that. Well, how did that originate? Asking questions, getting curious rather than jumping to darn conclusions or being closed-minded. Like the time for that is ending. Open-mindedness, expansion of consciousness, all of that is, is really coming up. And if I have a couple of crystal recommendations for this energy, The one I would suggest for Pluto would be topaz, smoky topaz, like topaz or smoky quartz. Those are two stones that are, boom, coming to mind. I love that energy because they're they're kind of transformative and magical and signify that, that energy of facing unconscious fears, bringing things up to the surface for you to healthfully shine light on and heal and face. Topaz, topaz or smoky quartz. 
Those are two badass stones. Rutilated quartz is another one. So rutilated quartz, topaz, smoky quartz. And for Aquarius, straight up aquamarine. That's like my jam with that. Aquamarine is so Aquarian to me. It signifies this futuristic vision, this higher mind, this expansiveness, this inclusiveness, this humanitarian ideal of, yeah, let's ask questions. Let's not be afraid of change. Let's get curious. Let's see what we know and how we live it, how we demonstrate through our actions and interactions what we know, what we believe. It's a really exciting time, and I'll have more insights and information in the next couple of podcasts, especially as we get ready for February. You know I'm thrilled about the numerology in February and the astrology. And we have all this Aquarian energy coming in that is just going to kind of re-enliven and reinvigorate us. And I also talk about our consciousness and our neuroplasticity, all of that stuff, all the scientific advancements and things around Aquarius that are just weird because Aquarius is kind of weird. It's quirky. Things are going to get really weird in the next few years. I'm just telling you. So that's why I'm like, don't get afraid. Get curious. Open your mind. Expand your heart. And hey, this is not talking about your religion or your affiliations. This is about enriching your beliefs, not just expanding or bucking the system of what you believe. It's about enriching your beliefs so you feel more enlivened and whole. I know I've talked about a lot of stuff. So I gave you the crystal recommendations. Also, you know what I would say is figure out your Aquarian friends. Like who, what friends of yours are born between January, what is it, like the 20th and February 18th, something like that. You'll have to look up the numbers. I'm not quoting it exactly. So who are your Aquarian friends? What do you like about them? What drives you nuts about them? You know, don't take their inventory, but look at kind of some of their traits. And we all have a lot more astrology than just our sun sign. You may have multiple planets in Aquarius. I encourage you to get a natal chart. Check out what your natal astrology is. See if you have any planets in Aquarius and what house system they fall into. This is the time to get curious about things and innovative so you feel more informed. So definitely, who are your Aquarian friends? And then also, check out all the badass Aquarians that we have who are famous or who have been inventors or revolutionaries and see who jives with you and why are you inspired by them? I mean, I would be like, hey, read Paris Hilton's book. She like rocked my world. So do some things that you wouldn't normally do. That's what this energy encourages. I'm really excited because the 2024 numerology guidebook is coming out this week. Hopefully it's out by Thursday or Friday. So more on that. If you're not on my newsletter, definitely get on soulpathology.com because we always communicate around that uh, in the newsletter and and let you know what's going on. And I'm not a big newsletter letter blaster. I send one or two a month max. So just know I don't clutter up your inbox. Or you can follow me on social media, Soul Pathology on Instagram. That's another good place. But if you have any feedback or ideas or insights or thoughts around this Pluto and Aquarius transit, what you're learning, shoot me an email, podcast at soulsessions.me. But definitely I'm excited about this guidebook. So be on the lookout because it's badass. And I did a full on audio companion to go with it. So you can buy the guidebook, which is interactive and has hyperlinks and all sorts of things. And it goes month over month through the year. And I'll talk about it more later. I'm just plugging it because I'm really thrilled about it. But I did a full on audio companion with a meditation and then month over month commentary. And it's really good. It's really good. So I'm super excited about it. But But uh, yeah, keep me posted, stay informed, and be well. See you soon. Hey, this is Reed Isbell. And Dan Isbell. Otherwise known as the Brothers Hunt. 
We're hosting a new podcast, God's Country, by Meat Eater and iHeart Podcast. God's Country is a weekly drive to the intersection of music and the outdoors. Two things that go together like Sunday and some pond fishing. Or cows and green pastures. This record will be the one that it will always define who I am. So hop on in and ride shotgun with us as we take the back roads with some of the most influential people in country music today. Listen to God's Country on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. I'm Jason Flom. And you're Maggie Freeling. Hey, Jason. Every day we learn about another person who shouldn't be in prison. 58 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. So glad you're home. If you want to be part of this work, listen to Wrongful Conviction. The podcast where we hand the mic to innocent people to hear their stories. How do you send someone innocent to prison? Listen to new episodes of Wrongful Conviction with Maggie Freeling and Jason Flom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Beauty Translated Season 3 is coming soon with, what? A second host? I'm Carmen Laurent, and this season I am joined full-time by world-renowned Janie Danger. Janie, what are we talking about in Season 3? We're talking about life, Carmen. Beauty Translated is about the many fragmented lives spreading across this rich tapestry of the trans experience. And the all-new Beauty Translated Love Line at 678-561-2785. Listen to Beauty Translated Season 3 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bye. Bye. 